What is going on, everyone? Welcome on into the Cree Bay Swim Q&A live unedited podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Jeff Wood. And I'm Meredith. Stay tuned for an awesome Q&A. All right. What we're going to do, this is kind of a new format that we're trying out. So first and foremost, thank you for tuning in and watching. How this is going to go is we are going to do one question about the learn to swim experience for adults every single night and post it live, unedited, uh, raw, just so that you can try to get answers that are a little bit less scripted and so that you feel confident about the answers. That's awesome. what we're going for. So... First and foremost, if you have a question that you want answered live on our podcast, add that in the comment section below. We read every single comment. We'll do our best to respond to every single comment. And that is the easiest way to get your question answered live on this uh, live on this show. But for today, we're going to answer a question we were just asked yesterday by an adult, which was, was um, how long does it take? Or how long will it take for me to learn how to swim? And I'll tell you, this is a really common question. We get asked it all the time. And most of the time, if you ask a swim instructor or a swim program, what this question or how long does it take for me to learn how to swim? The answer that most of them are going to give you is it depends. It depends. So what we're going to do by answering this question is break down the variables that go into this and how you can set yourself up for the most efficient learn to swim experience um, because it's not always going to be the fastest that's the right way to go and so as we unpack this hopefully we'll be able to get to the answer how long does it take to learn how to swim but we're going to unpack it so that uh the answer will apply hopefully to every single person listening shall we dive in let's do it all right cool so the biggest variable that you need to know about learning how to swim as an adult as it relates to how long it's going to take you to learn how to swim is what is your comfort level how relaxed are you and how relaxed can you be in the learn to swim experience because relaxation easily is the number one variable uh that's either going to make you stay in the learn to swim process longer or get through that process quicker you think that's right? I certainly think so. All right. So it's really the base. It's the foundation of learning how to swim. And having a base of relaxation is essential as we continue to develop and layer on more and more and more skills. And this is really the primary reason why, and I'll give you some data here, half of the United States population can't swim well enough to save their life. And of those... 70% have tried before and failed to learn how to swim. And primarily the reason why adults are failing and not failing is not really the right term, but why adults aren't learning how to swim and having that be a sustainable process is they're not approaching it from a lens of relaxation. They're approaching it from a lens of technique. Yes. And without relaxation, technique doesn't matter. So let's break this down and then we'll come on back to answering the question specifically. So when we're relaxed, our body can start interacting with properties of water that help pull this up. When we're not relaxed, i.e. we're entering into fight or flight mode, a couple of things happen. First and foremost, our brain has racing thoughts and it sends a signal to the body to start producing adrenaline. Adrenaline and water really don't mix unless we're going for a race which in the learn to swim experience we're not looking to race mm -hmm. all right so when we have racing thoughts and what i mean by racing thoughts are um like we're at the pool and we're reliving experiences or traumas from childhood got thrown in and almost drowned um witnessed a drowning uh we had one last year where a lady was learning how to swim with her father in India, and a dam broke, and she and her father got swept away. That would cause racing thoughts, racing thoughts if we were back at a pool. Or 
So we either caught in the past or we're future tripping, meaning what happens if water goes above our head, if we swallow water and we choke on it, what happens if we go in the deep end and we can't swim? So we're not in the present moment. Racing thoughts, adrenaline to the body causes shallow, fast breathing. Our body starts hyper oxygenating from an evolutionary perspective so that we can run away from the tiger. And that's not good because that cause, causes tension in our muscles. Tense muscles equals density. Density means we're sinking. We can't utilize the properties of water to help hold us up if we're tense and dense. And we're not able to also utilize the capacity of our lungs, which is where the shallow, fast breathing comes in to help hold us up. All right. So to bring this all the way back to the beginning, relaxation is the base of learning how to swim. We can't have a base of relaxation if we haven't learned how to move through our fears and our anxieties prior to stepping into the water. And this is where most adults just kind of start off on the wrong track when it comes to learning how to swim. They have a base. They're trying to create a base technique instead of a base of relaxation. Anything else you want to add to that one? I certainly think you covered most of it. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that is the primary uh, variable, I would say, in answering the question, how long does it take for me to learn how to swim? Once we hone in on that relaxation and we honor it hence the yin yang here we honor the zen the peaceful relaxation aspect of learning how to swim the process goes very very quickly where adults get caught up is they say they're relaxed and they're trying to force an outcome so with forcing an outcome when you're floating or trying to learn how to float for the first time, I see this a lot with students who achieve their first front float. And usually it's like a really big moment. And a lot of the times, sometimes people cry, you know, they're like, laughing because they're like oh my gosh i had no idea and it's such a novel new experience and then you want to feel it again but now you forgot that you were able to achieve that result because you were one with where you were you were one with the water you were one with your breath you were present and you were relaxed now, when we're trying to recreate what we just did, but we're adding force and expectation to what should happen rather than really allowing ourselves to continue working with the properties of water, we can experience some regression there because we're adding force to the equation rather than kind of letting go of that expectation. And it's, it, it's, it's quite incredible to me how much this very real physical example of something that's you know pretty spiritual or obscure is that once you release the expectation you seem to pass through a lot of um barriers uh but when you have the expectation you have force um the outcome is a lot different mm -hmm. and it's so subtle. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you nailed it and we saw it, we see it a lot and this isn't a male versus female thing, but I see the trying to force an outcome more on the male side than on the female side, particularly if the learn to swim experience has a husband and wife together in the same class. It tends to be generally speaking from my experience, that women are more in tune with their bodies than men and therefore progress substantially faster in learning how to swim because they're able to achieve that base of relaxation a lot quicker. Men, for the most part, try to create the outcome they think they think they want or they try to make, for example, front floating, they try to make it look like what they see in their head or what they see on TV, you know, arms up, legs up on top of the water and in trying to recreate that aren't able to do it.
Or if they're doing it with a partner, what I see a lot of times is like they're trying to keep up. Yeah. Where usually women progress very fast in the initial stages with um, understanding their buoyancy Mm -hmm. and achieving relaxation in that state. But then when you start adding movement to it, usually the progress for women slows down. Now, these are very general statements. Everyone is unique in their swim journey and nothing we say about what we see in general should you apply to believing is your journey. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it flip-flops because usually the husband or the boyfriend is initially trying to keep up, but then once they're able to slow down and go back and discover how important that foundation of relaxation is, not creating force, um, then they they tend to progress in a kind of a vertical lineup. But again, that's very general. Yeah. No, well said. And I think also one of the things that slows down progress initially with adults learning how to swim is if they are like type A personalities coming from other sports, having high achieved in other sports um swimming is not a sport or an activity where the harder you try the better your outcome you know if you think about sports like basketball and football typically the more you practice the more you try the harder you try you know if you're trying to throw a football the more you exert the further the ball is going to go Swimming is much more like golf. The more in tune you are with your body, the better the result is that you're going to achieve. And it's a difficult one for kind of the type A personalities to let go of and figure out um, because it isn't trying harder. It's just being more in tune um, with our body. And that really requires us to let go. Uh, as, as opposed to force or try like you had explained earlier. So, um, yeah. So I think that in answering the question, how long does it take for someone to learn how to swim? It is all about how long, how much do we have to move through in order to find a state of presence in the water? And mm-hmm. yeah. And the quicker we're able to do that, the rest of the skills that require technique just happen very, very quickly. So what does that mean? That can probably seem pretty, uh, like moving. How does one move through that before they take swim lessons? If Mm -hmm. their swim instructor, um, isn't addressing the anxiety and the fear and the tension Mm -hmm. that naturally occurs in the body when you've spent a lifetime not knowing how to swim. How do they, how do they do that? So, all right. So let's take a couple of different examples. Example number one, you're actively enrolled in swim class. Your instructor is only teaching technique. You're fairly scared of the water. Um, All the technique in the world isn't going to allow your body to relax well enough in order to move through the curriculum. And here's how you know, if you are mad exhausted, just trying to move a very short distance, Mm -hmm. you really probably need to go way back to the beginning and kind of start over and be really curious with the process Mm -hmm. in addressing what anxiety and fear you're holding on to and bringing into the water with you. Yeah. 100%. It's really hard to navigate. So like an example one, you're already actively enrolled in swim lessons. You have an instructor, you put your trust in that instructor. And it's not that they're trying to mislead you. Not at all. They're trying to give you the best advice that they have. Typically, swim instructors are either past swimmers or they're lifeguards or they teach kids and they just, you know, swim programs generally think that if you can teach kids, you can teach adults. And um that's another podcast for another day yeah i could just see you chomping at the bit to go for that (laughs) "Ah." no it's just yeah no i was thinking the same thing so that's example one someone's actively enrolled in lessons now if you've tried before 
and you haven't succeeded and you've been holding on to this notion that you did something wrong. Your body is the reason why you're not learning to swim. There's something wrong. Your bones are too dense. You're just not capable. Fill in the blank. Too much muscle. Yeah. To this, to that, whatever yeah. it is. Uh, it, it It's not true. I just don't think you were given the experience, the, the proper experience to be able to succeed. And so one of the things that we're doing here at Caribe Swim is starting the first week in June, we're launching a completely virtual learn how to swim class. And you can take it from anywhere in the world. We meet twice a week and we have a video series that you will get gain access to. And we'll meet one on one and as a group to help move you through that curriculum. This is super exciting. And if you're watching this all the way up to this point, please leave a comment in the comment section below, letting us know that you heard this because I'll give you the course for free. That's a thank you for listening to this podcast. Every person that takes that course will learn how to swim. Most of them will learn how to swim easily in under 30 days if you commit to the program. Typically, the length of time that it takes um, on site, even though we're not actively in the water, is around six to 10 classes. Most of the classes are an hour and a half to two hours long. So we're talking, you know, that 12 to 20 hour time frame. So to get back to the original question, that should be about what it takes to get you to learn how to swim. If you're at our location here in Tampa or our location in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Um, but nonetheless, the virtual learn how to swim experience will get everyone to learn how to swim. And I would love to invite you into the program. If you're listening to this podcast, you're up to this point and you're ready to take that program, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll make sure that you get entered into the program completely for free. Congratulations. Let's do it. So anyways, um, yeah, if you have any questions about anything related to the learn to swim experience for adults, we try to stick to the learn to swim side of it. We don't want to get too much into the competition or how do we swim faster side of swimming. I think uh, for the most part, that's covered really, really well on YouTube. And frankly, in the United States, I just think there's a lot of great coaches on that. And I think the world just needs more on the how do we get to the foundation of being able to learn how to swim and to learn sustainably, not mm -hmm. necessarily for competitive purposes, but to be able to swim leisurely to mm -hmm. take part in wild swimming, which is unbelievably good for your health and swimming in a way that, yeah, it's yeah, not so stressful. Awesome. So in answering the question, how long does it take me to learn how to swim? Uh, well, if you're with our program, 12 to 20 hours, if you're with another program, honestly, best of luck. Um, it, it could take any amount of time, depending on how long it takes you to learn how to have a base of relaxation. So thank you so much for tuning in to the Cree Bay Swim Q&A live podcast. Until I see you again, my friends. Safer swimming.